So it's Monday night, um, the 29th of August. It is the end of a very busy day, a bank holiday Monday here in the UK. We have um, several bank holidays throughout the year and this was the last one of the year pretty much. That always marks the end of summer. Um, and it's been an insanely busy summer for me. Um, I have had a million cats to look after. It like, literally feels like a million cats. And um, I'm not complaining because obviously this is my livelihood and cats are what I do. You know, I look after them and this is how I make my money. So it's been all good. I have um, never been busier. Like I've never had this busy a summer. Um, I don't know kind of why, <laughs> maybe just kind of post-pandemic, everyone's just really desperate to go away. I have been doing a lot of advertising and I've got a lot of, um, I've got a lot of traction from that. So I've managed to, um, managed to get quite a lot of new clients as well. So lots of new cats to look after. So it's been good, but I'm very, very tired. And usually the bank holiday Monday kind of marks the end of like the mental August of cat sitting. But I am still really busy, even into September. And I've got quite a lot of bookings for October. Um, I'm hoping that November will be quiet so that I can actually get a rest before the madness that is Christmas in December. Um, I have hardly had any summer myself. I've hardly really done anything or gone anywhere. I had my family here for uh, a week in July. But other than that, I haven't really done anything. So I'm looking forward to a rest. It's going to be required and necessary. Um, I'm hoping to go to Berlin in October. So that's going to be good. Oh, look, we've got a kitty. Hello, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> and the thing with being so busy is that I don't get to create as much as I want to. I don't get to make as much art as I need to and want to. Um, so I'm trying to kind of find a way in which I can balance my uh, earning capacity with my art making capacity. I also have to really think about going back and completing my MA in January and what um, what kind of work and what kind of uh, sensibility and thinking and critical thinking I'm going to be taking with me into completing my MA. Because obviously at the moment, I really just enjoy doing sketchbook stuff and, you know, cats and whatnot, but um, that probably will not suffice for completing my MA. So I really need to be thinking about that as well. And it's just, I really need to try and carve out some time to be able to do that, even if it's just a little bit every day, so that I feel like I'm actually getting somewhere because at the moment, not so much. So here you can see that my kind of creative uh, space is an absolute bloody mess. So I decided that um, these sketchbooks and all my journaling stuff, tons of washi tape, which I adore but hardly ever use and need to use, this little shelf area that the cat uses to get up to her bed. And um, yeah, my desk generally was just full of uh, rubbish. So it needed a good tidy. And uh, yeah, that's what I needed to do. These two little IKEA carts need a proper sort out, but that's a task for another day. In the meantime, I needed to just get this stuff started, sorted. Little, little Vassie having a little snoozy there. So yeah, this is how it turned out. It's kind of tidy of a sort, so I've still got things to put up on the wall and organize things about my desk space which just feels so much better now that it's actually cleared. I have actually moved that litter tray from under my desk over to next to these IKEA units um, so that I'm not constantly kicking it, you know, because putting your foot into litter is a, it's not the one, it really isn't.
since the last time I saw you, I have bought myself some art books and they're mostly art books that are relating to cats in art as I wanted to see what other artists had um, done paintings or drawings or kind of artworks of art, um, of cats rather, and uh, I had wanted to uh, have a little look and see um, if I could do any kind of master studies, so trying to find kind of artworks where Yes, you are copying the artwork, but mostly what you're doing is, is you're looking at the style and the composition and the way that they actually kind of um, uh, treat the subject matter, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a really good exercise for artists to do master studies um, in, uh, in, in kind of helping them develop their style, which is something that I am still constantly doing. Um, so it was really good to uh, buy some books and I'm going to show you some of them, some of the front covers so that you uh, can see so I've got this one cats in art which has got some lovely kind of classical historical less less contemporary mostly historical kind of artworks this one was produced by Tate Tate Modern Tate Britain and contains uh, a lot of artworks that obviously were within the Tate Britain or Tate Modern um, that contain cats this one is uh, just a, a compendium of kind of historical and contemporary artworks. It's some really, really lovely ones. For each of the books that I've got, I'm going to, I've kind of, you know, earmarked um, favourite paintings. Although, to be fair, there's a lot of them because there's so many amazing ones. Um, I really love a Japanese artwork and I really particularly enjoy the way that the Japanese um, treat cats in their artworks. So I got a couple of little Japanese artworks but there's this one which is really yeah. is that too close that's too close uh there we go yes which is which again i will show you the ones that i love there's some pretty pretty lovely ones in there and it's not just artworks there's some very lovely haikus as well this one is actually a book specifically about an artist i'm going to attempt the uh, pronunciation utugawa kuniyoshi Utugawa Kiniyoshi. Utugawa Kiniyoshi. I'm not sure if that's right. Please forgive me if it isn't. Um, and he did a lot of wood, wood block prints. Um, these are quite old, but there's some incredible art ones. Um, I keep saying art, but I mean cats. There are some incredible cat ones in it, so I will show you um, because they are amazing and will be really really interesting to do some studies of them to kind of see how I can interpret um, the way that these ones were created um, obviously I'm not going to be doing any wood wood cuts and uh, wood block prints but um, yeah sketching them is going to be fun I've got this big monster which really is more of a contemporary um, Kind of a look at uh, modern artists, you know, you know, our our contem my ours, our mm, our contemporaries, my contemporaries, your contemporaries, people in the art world right now making artwork with the cats in it. Um, there is some freaking amazing work in here, <laughs> absolutely incredible. I think I'm going to get a lot of inspiration from these. Um, which is great, given that I have to uh, go and complete my MA soon and. Uh, also have to be known as a contemporary artist. Um, I mean, I don't have to be known as a contemporary artist, but I guess it's, if I'm making art now, that is what I would be. And the last one for the cat art books is this one, which is also cats and art. This cat on the cover, I will show you. I did a little study of it, or rather I just took it as inspiration for a little quick kind of ink sketch, print sketch thing. It wasn't a print. I mean, it wasn't. It was paint. Was it paint? Was it watercolor? Or was it ink? It was ink. And I'll tell you why I remember it was ink. Because I then, once I had completed the picture, went on to spill the ink all over my desk, all over my feet, all over my shoes, all over the floor. Fortunately, there were no cats around at the time, uh, and I managed to save the very, very red ink from splashing all over my white duvet cover. Um, because obviously my art space is also in my bedroom but um yeah i did i did i'll show you i'll show you the one i did this but this has also got some really really lovely work in it um no. um so yes we shall uh, we shall go through that 
and this book is a book that I hadn't actually purchased I got it as a gift for my birthday and I got it from my housemate Helen and it is this one let me show you it is the story of art without men by Katie Hessel which is going to be really really interesting to to kind of click through I mean this is through to click through my god um, to actually page through you know that old analog thing of a physical paging paging yes that's what I'll be doing no swiping no clicking um, this is more of a history book but it um, is important and I'm really looking forward to kind of dipping in and out of this um, in terms of kind of research and in terms of actually women artists and kind of inspiration of um, women artists so this is going to be really cool to look through and it's a very very nice gift so yes these are the books that I am currently in ownership of so what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize the tripod so that I can put the camera on top view so we can have a look at my desk and I will flick through some of these books and show you some of the artworks that I find particularly en enjoyable and inspirational and uh, ones that I may be planning on doing some master studies of and ones that I have already done master studies of so I will uh, let you have a look So you would think that I would know better than to try and do any kind of painting or artwork when the kitten is actually roaming around uh, but clearly I did not learn my lesson this day and I now have green paw prints all over my desk from where she has stepped in the actual watercolour painting that I was doing at the time. Hmm, fun times. Anyway, she's very, very cute. Look at her. I mean, how can you not love that little face? But yeah, I then had to clean all of these paw prints off so and off her as well because we don't want her licking her feet with watercolour paint. Lesson learned. Okay, so the first book is the this one, Cats and Art, and it is being comp it's a compendium or compiled by Caroline Bugler, Bugler. I'm gonna say Bugler, it probably sounds better. And let's have a look at some of the artworks. Obviously, this initial artwork of the Siamese cats is particularly pleasing. Um, I must do some artworks of Siamese cats given that I have one. Yeah, the first one that I really, really love is by Marguerite Gerard. Uh, this is 1761 to 1837, so yeah, this is quite old. It's called The Cat's Lunch, and I particularly enjoy this cat's face and kind of pose and stance here. I can almost kind of hear the growling of the cat as it's trying to enjoy its milk, and this dog is watching on. So um, yeah, I can, I can practically hear the cat. I love the this kind of classical... Um, kind of rendering or a kind of creation of this particular artwork. The colours are all really beautiful and vibrant and it's um, it's quite lovely. The next one in this book that I really like is, hang on we're going to get to that one in a second. Yeah, I lost it, I've lost it, oh yeah it's this one, um, is the kittens. So I, this is a study of kittens by Alexandre Francois Deporte, Deporte. Deporte? I'm not sure. Anyway, and um, it is uh, a study of kittens. Always having a kitten. I understand these expressions quite well. Um, I love also this is a study um, done in paint, which is not something that I particularly do a lot, so it's something that I want to be doing uh, more of. So this next one is just hilarious um, for obvious reasons. It's kind of got like a little human face on like a fluffy cat body. Um, and also like the cat actual face features are like too small for the head. It's quite, quite hilarious. Um, let's see if I can zoom in and show you what I mean. Can you see, can you see that? <laughs> the cat is hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Love it. Yeah, I do enjoy uh, a painting or a picture of a cat that's kind of wrong. I mean, I obviously produce a lot of those, um, so uh, that's why I enjoy them. Yes, next. This one is by Louis Wayne, who, um, there was a film done recently of Louis Wayne, um, or Louis, Louis, or Louis Wayne, um, that has uh, Benedict Cumberbatch playing Louis or Louis, and um, I quite enjoyed it. The, um, I really, really just love an oil painting um, 
and this again kind of feels kind of sketchy and kind of feels like a, well I mean it is a study of a tabby cat so that's why it feels sketchy um, and kind of unfinished but um, just the paint quality and the brush the brush strokes and the, the marks are just really exquisite and um, it really kind of gives you a sense of the markings of a tabby cat which um, I've got a tabby cat so also want to be attempting that because tabby cats are quite difficult their markings are really quite um, complex so trying to get them down and making them look right is uh, is difficult. So yeah, really love that one. This one is by, uh, by Arthur Hayer. Hayer. Yeah, my pronunciations are so good. And this is called White Cats Watching Goldfish, which you know on the face of it is just absolutely a beautiful scene. Pretty little kitty cats, and uh, you know watching the kind of goldfish. The little poem that goes with it, or as as we say in Scotland poem um, it's from a poem called on the death of a favorite cat drowned in a tub of goldfishes which is extremely macabre and extremely sad and oh my god I can't even imagine that happening but um, yeah let's forget the poem and just look at the beautiful beautiful painting because it is it's very very pretty I love it white cats are quite difficult to um, to paint as well because obviously there's a lot of kind of just reflection of the light or refraction of the light. And so you're just really trying to paint in the shadows to trying to get the kind of gist of the cat itself. And obviously all of the colors in the background kind of give you the kind of contrast of the white cat. So these, this is very, very beautifully done. It's lovely. Again, talking about white cats, this is just stunning. It's, um, I think it's a detail from a bigger painting. Um, but I feel like almost like this on its own is just is just delicious and kind of like exists as a painting on its own, I think. It looks like it was maybe done in watercolour or in gouache. I'm not entirely sure, but it's super lovely. I have done a master study of this and I'm going to show you the master study of this that I did um, at the end of us going through these books. So yeah, yeah, very pretty, very lovely. This one is the cat. This is the Tate Tate or Tate modern one. The first the first one, which is like early on in the book to come up, is this one. <laughs> now, you know, oops, throwing things over. Is this is this painting? No, it's by a painter called Richard Lidner. Homage to a cat. Obviously, there is some nudity in it, but you know, in art, nudity isn't uh, obscene for some reason. Um, so yeah, nobody report me for nudity or modern or or for porn or anything like that. Um, I obviously don't make my um, my uh, my videos suitable for children or whatever. Even though there's nothing in my videos generally that's not suitable for children, apart from the odd bit of swearing because you know I've got a mouth like a heathen. Um, but I had did not know about this artist, and I flip and love this. This is like. It's quite early on, 1881 to 1955. So, you know, early, early century. And um, wow, just, it's just gorgeous. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the kind of geometric kind of structure of the shape of the face and the head and the kind of bulkiness of it and like the angle of the cat. You know, like all cats that are being held, this cat looks like it's um, not having fun, you know, which is just standard for cats. Um, yeah, it's great. I love it. All-time favourite David Hockney painting, Mr. and Mrs. Clark and Percy. Apparently, this cat is not even called Percy. It's called Blanche, which is brilliant. Um, I also know a cat called Blanche who I look after. It's a Bengal, and she's very lovely. And her name is Blanche, but she gets called Weasel. So I don't know what it is about the name Blanche that makes everyone want to change it. But if I had a cat called Blanche, I would be calling her Blanche. And she would be, of course, named after the uh, incredible Blanche Devereaux from uh, The Golden Girls. Yeah, I love everything about this painting. Um, it's one of my favourite David Hockney's. I mean, I love a lot of David Hockney paintings, but this is definitely a favourite. Not just because of the cat, but actually because of the way that the cat kind of steals the show. Yes, you see the pose of these two people, but the way that the, this has been composed, the structure, the light coming through this window and kind of falling on the cat, the whiteness of the cat, everything about it makes you just kind of look at the cat in this window. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's it's um, it's a masterclass in composition and it's just very, very beautifully done. And uh, yes, I adore it. 
which is my favourite. I've got multiple postcards of this um, that I keep and that I send to people that I love. So yes, let's have a look at what else have I got here. I and mean, there are lots of incredible ones, but of course, um, this, I just really, really love the quality of this painting. Um, and the fact that, you know, the kind of pose of the cat is, is, is you know, F you, why, 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 why are you looking at me? I'm not looking at you, go away. I don't want to pose for you. Um, and also a black cat's amazing. But yeah, there's just there's such a gorgeous quality of this. It's very, very still and very, very peaceful and very lovely. So yes, I do enjoy it. Let's have a look. Like I said, there's lots of amazing ones in here. This I really enjoy. I really enjoy. For, <laughs> I really enjoy. Again, any cats that are done in a weird and wonderful way, um, or that are kind of slightly wrong, are brilliant to me. This is by an artist called James Boswell, and apparently, I think he was a bit of a cartoonist actually. So. Um, for for newspapers so yeah these kind of have that kind of feeling about them but they're just absolutely brilliant i mean look at them incredible incredible faces now, i have a cat that looks like this that i drew the other day not intentionally not based on this at all but actually does quite look like that so yeah clearly clearly i've got something going for me um yeah love it uh yeah and like i said there are more amazing things in here but that's that book and then as I was talking about the Japanese kind of inspired art books that I got, this is one of them called Cats in Spring Rain, and it's both paintings with cats included in them and um, haikus and poems. So let's have a look at some of the ones that I enjoyed. So this one for starters, I think this one, I think the kind of the pops of red are just really delightful and, and lovely. They're really, really nice and kind of make the whole painting kind of be kind of cohesive and it kind of matches the tiny little pink lips of her um, lipstick and the red collar on the cat. And it, it, weirdly, you don't think that kind of red and yellow kind of go together, but actually they work really, really nicely in terms of kind of contrasting colours. Um, and then all the kind of the pattern and the detail and... I do just really love the kind of simplicity of cats done in, ja in the Japanese style. They're just incredible. And obviously these were done, this looks like it would have been a, a kind of a, a wood woodblock print. And so kind of lines and everything and woodblock prints were always kept quite simple and quite geometric because um, it's easier to actually kind of create them. Um, but the, the kind of the result is just really, really lovely. And then there's this one. I mean, look at them. Look at these little sleeping babies. Now, again, <laughs> the kind of weirdness of kind of doing, of, of rendering cats or drawing cats or painting cats and them being kind of slightly wrong just really appeals to me. So these are not 100% anatomically or even kind of facially correct or right, but they're just brilliant. I mean, they're just gorgeous. And look, this is such a beautiful, peaceful scene you can almost hear them purring it's really beautiful this one is i mean i don't even know if you can kind of make out the actual black cat and you can just see the eyes basically um you know we all love a, a void kitty so this one's again beautifully beautifully rendered it's super gorgeous I mean, how beautiful is that? So pretty, it's so simple, but the tiny little bits of detail in it are just, that kind of indicate fur is just absolutely stunningly gorgeous. It's just so, so, so pretty. I love it. J'adore. That's that one. This one is again by Utagawa Kiniyoshi. Utagawa Kiniyoshi? I'm not going to stop, I'm going to stop saying that because I'm probably doing it wrong. But yeah, he's got multiple woodblock prints in here that are just incredible. But the ones that I kind of picked out for us to kind of look at is, is obviously this is the entire painting, which is amazing. Look at this woman making this cat dance and the cat's maybe putting up with it. Not quite sure. But look at the detail over here. It's just brilliant. <laughs> its, face is, its face is kind of saying, hmm, I might kill you now, maybe later. I'll think about it. 
Um, you know, if anyone who's ever tried to make a cat do anything that they don't want to do, you will know uh, these do these things kind of things don't often go very well. Now, this is just an absolute masterpiece. I absolutely adore this. I mean, cats dressed as humans. Look at, look at, look at, look at the little paws and the little, like, geisha shoes. I mean, I'm sure there's a, an official name for those. I'm really sorry that I don't know what it is, but the incredible. And the expressions, and, like, this one looks like it's kind of getting ready for a fight, but it's not. It's actually just stepping off of a boat. This one's greeting it. It's coming off of a boat, I think. Yeah, there's a boat here. Oh, look, there's another cat here. Like, I mean, just, they're all just so bloody brilliant. And the colours are incredible. And kind of blues in the robes are kind of matched by the blue in the water over here. And it's just, oh, so much to see. The detail is just delicious. Lovely. Oh, I keep moving the book all over the place. Then we go. There you go. That should be a, a good parting shot of it. I've got one more which is again, cats dressed as humans, but it's ladies this time. In their parlor, I think, kind of uh, chilling out, getting ready for a night out down the disco. <laughs> I'm showing my age here by saying disco. No one knows what that is anymore. Uh, yeah, down the club. Yeah, getting ready. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Everything about it. It's very, I'm not entirely sure what this is in the background, but. Is it a mirror? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's all lovely. Look at this, licking her paws. Beautiful. There's two bigger books that I uh, have still to show you, which I'm not gonna show you in this video. I'll show you in, in, in another video when I'm doing kind of uh, master study stuff. Um, but uh, there's lots of images in this particular book, this last one that I'm gonna show you that is just incredible. So this is the book of the cat. And just on the first, page i mean look at that is that not exquisite this does look like a lino cut or a wood cut um it's super simple and black and white and i mean you can't really go wrong with that it's just it's really powerful and effective it's a gorgeous gorgeous image this book is called angus heinland and it's not called angus heinland it's by angus heinland and caroline roberts I will put all of the details of these books, I will put them in the description below the video so that if anyone wants to actually go and buy these books or get them out of the library, etc., you can do so. So there are a lot, again, a lot of amazing, amazing artists in this. I mean, look at that one. Amazing. This one is by an artist called Midori Yamada, who I did not know of and um, I've now become aware of through these books. And I'm going to show you some more of the work of this artist, but absolutely stunning. I mean, look at that. It's, isn't it? Look at the, the blue and the black and white. Just oh, gorgeous. But then these ones, like, I mean, this is when I get like some like serious like envy of people's ability to just do such beautiful, beautiful works of art. Um, yeah, <laughs> something to aspire to, I guess. Um, and some more of this artist's work. I'm not sure if Midori Yamada is a woman or a man. Um, if anyone knows, please do tell me in the comments because I am not sure. I'm going to do my research, obviously, um, because I want to find out more about this artist because these works are gorgeous. But look at that, the detail also on this cushion oh, to die for. The expression of this cat's face also to die for. I love it. And one more of a Maduri Yamada, which I also super adore. Poor birdie. But, you know, that's nature, I guess. Absolutely gorgeous. This one is by an artist called uh, Diane Hopner. Hopner? Hopner? I really don't know. I will again will... <laughs> The name in the description because I am butchering lots of people's just, um, names and how you pronounce them but again oil paintings man oh. like you can't beat the look of oil it's just exquisite mm -hmm. lovely just lovely oh we've already done this one I'm showing you again because I bloody love it here's another artist I wasn't aware of uh, Vladimir Dunjik, Dunjik, D-U-N-J-I, 
Tsi Dunjik, I think. Love these cats. Look. And also, the paintings appear to be done on linen, so that the linen, actual, the kind of fabric and detail of the linen shows through on the faces of the women. Just exquisite. Really, really beautiful. But the cats, man. The cats are brilliant. I probably say brilliant a lot. But all of this work is just very, very good. This artist I was aware of. Um, I think I have seen some of this work on YouTube or online somewhere um, where it's, you know, it's kind of like ink, ink blotting and kind of, you know, allowing the kind of the process of what the, what the ink does naturally in water um, to give you that kind of the sense of the fur of the cat, which is just really, really clever and really beautiful. I've tried it a little bit myself, but to not as much success as this artist, obviously. Um, some Da Vinci. This work is by Kay Madonna. Not Madonna. Kay McDonough. Kay McDonough? I think it's Irish. Might be, might be Scottish. Again, apologies for butchering um, people's names. Uh, these look to me like they are etchings or dry point etchings. They're certainly etchings of some description. They're prints of some description. I'm pretty certain that they're etchings. And given the etching is my first love, like that's what I did when I did my BA, um, these are just beautiful. I absolutely adore these. I would love to try and do some um, of my own. And given that when I go back to do my MA next year, I will have access to a print studio. Maybe I will do some. Hmm. Sneak in there, do a few little etchings, see how I get on. This is by Dame Elizabeth Blackadder, who is a very, very famous cat painter from the UK, and it's just a sketch, just a drawing. Again, it could be a print. Maybe it is. Maybe it was a drawing that was kind of maybe turned into a lithograph or a, an etching, but it's gorgeous. Mark makings are absolutely beautiful. That kind of tummy flu, if you just want to... Oh, gorgeous. And this painting... I didn't know about this painting, but I came across a series of photographs that were that, that were inspired by this painting. And then from the photograph, I did a like a sketch, master study, blah blah blah, etc. Or used the photograph as uh, inspiration, not knowing that it was actually taken from this particular painting. So I will show you that one as well um, in my sketchbook. But love it though, like the big dress, kid's face. The way that the cat and the dog, I mean, the dog kind of looks like a dog, but the cat's quite weird, and I love that. Weird cats are good cats, as far as I'm concerned. So let me just show you the two. Let me just show you. So this is a sketch from this year. Let me just show you the two. Let me show you the one. The, the red dress first. So this is the little sketch. Hang on, let me just zoom out for you so you can see that. So yeah, this is a sketch I did. It's basically just done in pen, pen and gouache. Yeah, pen and gouache, black pen and gouache. Um, and I will put a picture up of the photograph that I initially saw online that I took that I took inspiration from and that I actually did this from um, but again it was from this the original the photograph was inspired by this painting so this painting yeah so that's kind of my rendition of it but um yeah I might need to investigate doing things more like more kind of my interpretations of things without them being too obvious that they're kind of um, either master studies or copies or whatever. I think that's the delight of doing uh, master studies is, is that you, in you initially will do, you know, what is kind of uh, you're trying to be um, honouring the, the kind of the original painting and doing a kind of a, 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 as close to a copy of it as you can, perhaps potentially. Um, uh, but then you're always going to, you're never going to copy, you know, unless you're a forger, unless you're intending on actually passing stuff off as your own, um, which is not the purpose of doing master studies, um, you actually will always bring your own style to it. Because again, you're not trying to, you know, brush, brush stroke for brush stroke, trying to copy the original artist. Um, 
certainly that's not why I'm intending to do it at all. I'm trying to do master studies as a way in which to do exercises and to learn more about my style and about how I kind of create things. So the next painting I did a little master study of was this one here that I showed you originally, initially, first book. Let's just find it. Come on. Yeah, it's this one here, Robert O'Rourke, The White Cat, Homefield. So let me just find you the picture. So that's the... I don't know how I'm going to do that. Right, so that's the original. Right. And that's the... Let's see. Can I get that flat for you? Yeah, this was done in kind of like colour pencils. Mostly um, Caran d'Ache Luminance uh, pencils. And yeah, it's a little master study. Well, I think it came out quite nicely. I think I made the cat a little bit fatter than what it is, but you know, hey-ho. Yeah. I quite enjoyed doing this one. So yeah, this is, I feel like a bit of a success in terms of learning how to kind of compose things and, and kind of how to do the cat's pose and the structure and everything. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, so that's the end of this little demonstration. <clears throat> so yeah, let's take a look. So yeah, let's take a look. So yeah, let's take a look. Oh my god, how many times do you need to say that? Stop looking at the flipping viewfinder. Stop looking at the thing. Look at the thing. Just, oh.